most common causes of knee pain in young people are injuries, weekend warriors, people that are just doing their regular activities, um, so trauma. But by far, as you get older, the most common cause of knee pain is um, arthritis. The most important place to start are the basics. And before you can ever talk about treatment, the key is to know exactly what you're treating or have a diagnosis. You can tell by taking a history. The patient tells you exactly when it began and how it started and how it feels. The second way to make the diagnosis, physical exam. You take everything you know and you take your hands, your ears, your eyes, and you apply it to that patient's body. And by physical exam, you can confirm that maybe it's the meniscus. And third, you get the MRI, and the MRI shows a torn meniscus. And so that's the way you should really um, make the diagnosis, and then you can decide exactly what to do. The three um, most common procedures are arthroscopic knee surgery, usually for a meniscus, number two, um, total knee replacement, and the third is partial knee replacement or unicompartment knee replacement, where you replace one compartment. By far, arthroscopic surgery is the least invasive, and you can actually walk um, maybe with a cane or a crutch the same day or the same week, depending on how long the thing has been bothering you. The longer you've let it go, usually the harder it is to recover. Arthroscopic surgery, days to weeks you can be back on your feet. Within about four to six weeks you can actually be back in the gym and um, you have a very tiny or three very tiny incisions. There's some swelling that lasts for about six weeks. Partial knee replacement can have a smaller incision and you um, do much less work inside the body because you're only replacing one area. Usually by six weeks, you're recovered from the um, actual insult or trauma of the surgery, but you're not in shape, you don't have endurance, you don't have power or stamina or agility, so after six weeks, you can start going back to the gym, maybe a combination of physical therapy plus the gym, and start getting back in shape. Total knee replacement is the hardest of all the surgeries it's harder than total hip for the patient. It's harder than partial knee. Um, the recovery begins by six weeks. You can be off of crutches. You could probably um, walk freely around the neighborhood at regular speeds, but you're still swollen. You don't have your range of motion yet. You can't bend fully. You should be able to straighten fully, but bending is hard because of the swelling, and so by three months, you might be in the gym doing things and enjoying it, and you still have to work. It can take nine months or even a little longer before all of the swelling goes down. And so there's a, you know, there are grades of the easiest, medium, and the most difficult. Physical therapy is essential after knee surgery. If you don't do physical therapy, the majority of the patients can have an, a bad outcome or at least their recovery can be um, dragged out over months to a year without the help of therapists. The most important thing after knee surgery, immediately after knee, any knee surgery, is you have to get the knee out to full extension. Everyone thinks that the amount of bend is the most important early, but if you don't get that knee straight, if it's bent, the patient will have two legs that are the wrong or uneven length. They'll fatigue, the quads will hurt, the muscles in the front of the thigh will hurt, even if they're just standing still, even if they're not walking. So you have a leg length discrepancy if you're flexed, you lose power and your muscles fatigue, and anyone watching you walk from any distance will watch you limp. So you have to get rid of the um, flexion and get full extension first, the therapist have to start really early because that can happen in two weeks. You can have two weeks after surgery, you can get stuck. There are very um, many ways to avoid blood after hip and knee surgery. One way is to donate your own blood, and that's our most common technique. The patient will donate their own blood. As soon as they give the blood, 
their body starts to replace it and make new blood. By the time they have their surgery, we have blood and they have their own blood and we give their blood back to them. So that's one good safe way. They're now medications, erythropoietin. You give someone this injection and they'll increase their blood count. So they'll come with even higher than normal blood count and if they lose blood, then you don't give them blood. They just go down to a normal number. There are ways to um, add fluid, so any blood you lose, you're losing more fluid than you're losing red cells. And at Good Samaritan Hospital, we have a transfusion-free medicine program for all patients. Um, the public needs to know that there are different ways of doing these operations, particularly joint replacements. Knee replacement, um, the knee is a complex joint. It spins, it bends, it holds up your weight. The operation knee replacement has been similar since the 1960s. You have a raw exposed bone, it's rubbing against another bone and you put a cap on it. Like dentists have always done fillings and crowns. They'll put a crown on a tooth. What's changed though is how you get those parts on properly. And you can imagine there are several ways to make the legs straight and to make sure the parts are put on at the right angle. If you put them on wrong, then the knee won't work well. Computer navigation is a tool that we've used since 2006. While we're in surgery, we have a GPS system that tracks the thigh bone, and anywhere it moves, we can see it on a computer screen. It tracks the leg bone, the tibia, and anywhere that moves in the room, we can see it before we ever cut any part of that bone and modify it, we see it on a computer screen, we see a laser line that says exactly what we're going to do and when we do it, we can check it electronically and we can watch it on a screen. As we put implants in onto the bone and attach them, we're watching and we can see whether the leg is off one degree, half a degree. We can get, quote, perfect alignment. The other way you can do that is you can have a piece of string or a cord and you can hold it up next to the leg and decide that the leg is straight. And, or you can use a ruler. Well, we have a string, we have a ruler, and we have a computer. And that's what we use. I believe one day everyone will consider it the standard of care and I think the young medical students, the young people that are training in orthopedics, when they see what the computer does, they get it and they say, why isn't everyone using this? Many older surgeons say, I trained with the best, we didn't use computers, and it's unnecessary. I'm in the um, former camp. I believe that the computers have a role in your car, in your personal life. Everyone else in medicine, everywhere I look, have computers, the nurses do, and I should not turn off all my electronic equipment before embarking on an operation. The patient experience. We have patients who've had surgeries and they come to us and their leg is still crooked. Um, one thing that gives them confidence, they want to know, how are you going to get these legs straight when another great surgeon that I trusted um, did the surgery and I came out looking like this, deformed? And so um, the computer gives them confidence. I can tell them how it works. The computer looks at the center of the hip joint, the ball, and there's a perfect center. It looks at the center of the knee and the center of the ankle, and it's possible to line up three points perfectly. There is such a thing as perfection if you can line up three points in a perfect line. That's what the computer does. The old way, we'd measure an angle between the thigh bone and the leg bone, but women that have wide pelvis have a little angle that's slightly different. People that have narrow pelvis, their angle is a little different, so we'd put it in a range between three and nine degrees, and you had freedom. The computer says, no, there's a perfect alignment, there's perfect balance. And so patients get confidence that we can line them up perfectly, that we can see it while we're doing it, that we won't make the same mistakes. So one group of patients that really benefits are patients who need revision surgery. Another group, people that have two knees that need to be fixed. You can't fix one one way at an angle and another at the other. 
you really need them to be symmetrical to get the best results. Um, and so you can take legs that are, have been put together wrong and you can get them straight. You can put, take legs that have become bow-legged or knock-kneed from arthritis and you can get them straight. And um, you know, those are the, um, the big advances that make a difference that patients don't know about. But you have a choice. You have to do your homework, but you can find where these technologies exist and you can request them.